St. George. Perhaps not most widely known, especially here in the United States, um, but he's patron saint of England and of Portugal, of soldiers and of the Boy Scouts, as our good deacon knows. Um, appropriate to our times, though he's actually one of the 14 holy helpers, those who were invoked during the Middle Ages as protection against the plague. In his story, he was a soldier back in the Roman Empire around the late 200s who refused to reject his Christian faith, and for that he was brutally tortured and killed, a martyr for Christ. Historically, we don't know a whole lot more than that, though many legends have grown up around him. It was said that during his many torments, miraculous things happened, like his coming back from the dead three times after being dismembered, burned alive, and buried. Further, many came to believe due to the miraculous signs that appeared around him. My favorite story, what he might be best known for, is the later legend that he came to fight a great dragon. Um, as the story goes, there was a village that kept being troubled by a dragon, and they'd make offerings to appease him, eventually having to offer him human sacrifice from the town. And eventually, the king's daughter was chosen by lottery, but St. George came in, killed the dragon, and saved the princess. The stuff of fairy tales. But of course, what do most of us say today when we hear a story like that? Well, it's really got to be all made up. There's no such thing as dragons. St. George probably didn't even exist at all. We're quick to discount stories like this, like so much of our faith, as stories, not reality. Many in our world argue Adam and Eve, the miracles we hear, it's all the same, wishful thinking, but not anything that's real. And while I won't argue that dragons really exist, that scientists just haven't found the bones yet. Um, I think there's something very sad about a world that doesn't see the value of a story like that of St. George, even if there's a bit of a fantastical element to it. I think G.K. Chesterton is the best in speaking in this area. He talks about a world that's so rational, so reasonable, that it ends up becoming unreasonable. How it gets so caught up in the scientific, trying to grasp and understand the lose sight of those deeper realities. He talks about really the most reasonable people in the world actually end up in the insane asylums um, because there's no one more reasonable than the paranoid person. So even if you try to convince them you're there to help, well, that's exactly what somebody would say who's out to get them. So too, as somebody who's convinced they're Napoleon, they'll talk and speak in French and walk around and talk and act as if they're Napoleon. But how can you convince them otherwise? They're caught in their sma same small circle in their minds. They're locked in. They can't see the bigger picture. Like so many in our world, they look at the world and don't see God, don't see hope. They see nothing but themselves and the physical world around them. But I think that's what the beauty of St. George, the beauty of our faith really is. It helps expand our minds and appreciate the deeper realities of our world, even if they're hard to grasp on the surface. We see in St. George a figure who faced down a mighty dragon, if not a physical beast, the Roman Empire, and we see his great bravery. We see how in a way he conquered that dragon, even if it cost him his life, concerning, converting souls to Christ and earning him eternal glory. We're given our story that captures something far more real, far more true, that whether a mystical beast with wings and scales ever existed, not that, but the fact that there are great dangers in this world, but that we can overcome them. As Chesterton writes, every child knows there are dragons out there, dangers and things that are out to get them, but these sort of stories show them that there's, there's something greater. There's a St. George that can conquer them. Sure, the dragon is bigger than stronger than us. Sure, the challenges we face will seem beyond our abilities, but these stories open our minds to something beyond this world that makes victory possible. And of course, that's what our faith is all about. It's ultimately a story of victory, of good, winning that insurmountable victory over evil. Christ, by his death, conquering the great dragon of evil and sin and death and redeeming us. And more than that, it's the story of all of us who are called to rise up, take up our arms, and follow Christ. That call to ride valiantly into battle against the dragons that seem most insurmountable. Those out in the world of secularism, relativism, the culture that murders innocent children in the womb, and values money and power, pleasure and fame over eternal life, but also the dragons in our hearts of envy, greed, lust, dishonesty, despair that make us desire those same empty things. But like St. George, we know that we can conquer them in the name of Christ if we remain close to him and follow him. 
in this incredibly challenging time then when so many are called to bravery we're called to face down those dragons inside and out in a world that's despairing that thinks only of dollars and cents of inconvenience and discomfort that closes in on itself thinking there's nothing we can do it's just too big we see this rather as an opportunity to rise and to fight again as G.K. Cheston wrote inconvenience is only an adventure wrongly considered let this be our great adventure in a world that denies dragons exist let's rise up and fight them Let's show the world that not only are they out there drawing us away from God, but there's a conqueror, Jesus Christ, who can help us overcome them. Let's take on the sword of prayer and the shield of penance, and whether we slay the dragon, as St. George did, or or lose our lives in faithful service, as St. George also did, we know the victory is Christ, and with us he will share that eternal crown of glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit,